The government has revealed plans to pump 250 million quid into the NHS, of course, to try and manage these waiting lists. Uh, Labour, though, have accused the government of offering the NHS a sticking plaster. Uh, don't forget, we've got about 7.6 million people on the waiting list in England. The NHS, whatever way you look at it, and yes, we can all sit there and say there's individual doctors and nurses and they're all working and they're all great and that's brilliant, but as an institution... As a, an effective deliverer of a service, it's failed, hasn't it? It's really bad at the moment. But when you talk about privatisation, you think, hmm, the water companies, they were great. I mean, come on. W what we need is, is proper... The, the real problem with the NHS is staff. There's no question about that. Um, first of all, we, we don't train enough and then we don't retain enough. And, and, and if we had proper staffing for the NHS, then actually it would, it would completely but change But do we still have caps at medical school places in this country? Yes. Uh, why? See, that's well, something... Well, why don't actually... you ask the government? I mean... Because I mean... they're not here, I'm asking you. <laughs> You're asking me when actually what Labour says is we would, we would have more medical schools and train more doctors. But they would still put a cap on that. Well, you, you, you only put a cap because there's a limit to how many people you can train at a time, right? I mean, there's, you can't go and train um, 100,000 doctors. You've got to train them properly. So, for instance, in Sunderland, they're talking about a medical school and, and they've got the vice-chancellor of Sunderland University to, to, to sign up to it, to look at it properly, to talk to Sunderland Hospital about how it works. Training a doctor, I mean, you know, when you go to a doctor, you want somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> Ideally, absolutely. So, so that that's what you have to have. You want you want you want trained nurses. You want you want lots more stuff. And instead, what you're having is is gaps all the time. I mean, you can't judge the NHS when it's so badly understaffed and and the morale is so bad. It's all about staffing. Actually. So, no to privatisation. Yes to uh, state control, but perhaps just not this government. You think the Labour government instead. Oh, I think, I mean, I think what Wes Streeting, who would be the next health secretary if Labour wins the election, I mean, what, what, he is absolutely dedicated to turning the NHS around. Remember, so why are this they was... So why aren't they smashing out the park in Wales then? Because they don't have enough money to hire people. Oh, that old chestnut. Well, th but there they... is a real... But there, look, there is a real, real problem, right, about, 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 about ha having enough. I mean, so... This, this government... They can so choose it, to spend more on their health. This is what I don't understand about Labour. Spending on if Labour are the on. answer to fixing the NHS and if we vote Keir Starmer and we're going to have this wonderful service, there is no better opportunity than right now, in the here and now, for Labour, who earn, essentially, overlook, oversee and fund the Welsh NHS, for them to use that as their proof of concept and demonstrate, look <laughs> at what we can do. And they are not doing that, some would argue, that in some cases the Welsh NHS is even worse. The problem with devolution is that you have the Welsh government doing it. <laughs> I thought you had the Welsh <laughs> government. <laughs> no, I was going to endorse why you is against it, why God. Is it always someone else's fault, though? Because it's Labour ran. And what I'm saying is Labour are not making a great uh, job at it. No, but what, what I'm saying is, is that, 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 that instead of actually trying to deal with it, what the Tories do is they go, oh, No, I'm not anybody... talking about the Tories. I'm asking you, if Labour are so good and they're going to fix this service so we can all rely on it, why are they not demonstrating that, leading from the front and showing us what they're capable of in Wales? Because, it is, because, because the problem with devolution... The problem with devolution is is that that it's problematic about. But you, health you has can't... been devolved, and they can also raise no. their taxes, and they can raise their spending they, if that's they what they can't. want to do. And they've actually. got control they of their local and, but you but spend, they can't. and you spend more per person in Wales on health spend than you do in England, if my uh, memory serves me right, which I think it does. No, I don't think it does actually. But what, so I think one can fact check that. Yes, I think. But I think what what what's important is, um, I mean, actually, the the thing about Wales is that if you talk about if if you if you talk to patients. They're much happier. So actually, there is a there is a decent service in Wales. Ben Habib's not looking convinced. Well, I mean, I think there are two things going on with the NHS. I think the first thing is a structural problem, which is that when it was set up, um, the average life expectancy was 68. It's now 81. The population True. of the United Kingdom was around 50 million. It's now 68 million, give or take. You know, number of people we can't really count because they're. We don't know whether they're here or not, the illegal migrants. Um, but the population is up. You aren't allowed to use it, the, by the, the way. The, the population is up. 
the um, life expectancy is up. So in a sense, it's become a victim of its own success. Also, treatment has become a lot more expensive since, you know, since 1948. Um, we, we now have very complex treatments for very serious ailments, which can cost hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, on occasion, which obviously we didn't have in, you know, when the NHS was set up. So in a, in a sense, it's a victim of its own success and the advancement of medicine. And it becomes ever more difficult for an NHS to provide free, uh, you know, free, uh, free uh, medication at the point of delivery. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that we utterly broke the NHS in the pursuit apparently to protect it and locking down the country, um, we became just the COVID, the COVID sort of service, didn't we? Yeah, and primarily a national pr COVID yeah, service. Pr yeah, that's, that's, uh, I knew you had a brilliant not, expression not for always. it. Not always, yes, I know, because people yeah. get in touch and say, shut up, Michelle, people without COVID was treated. Yes, sure. I know that they were, but it was predominantly a national yeah, COVID service. But cancer went because undiagnosed. Because they were worried cardio. about people dying of COVID. I mean, people weren't in there just because they've got COVID. People were in there like Boris no, but, Johnson, where they thought he was going to die. Yeah, but, right. So, and that's it. Th but, but I mean, the, that's what we have to remember, is, but, was that we had a pandemic. Yeah, but, but you also had these Nightingale hospitals that you'd apparently locked up in no time to deal exclusively with COVID, and you barely even touched them. But I, and, I, uh, because but I think, there weren't enough, but, there weren't any nurses. That's the whole problem. Well, you, the Nightingale you, hospitals were completely ill-conceived because they all yes. had spirometers, and spirometers ridiculous. turned out to be the wrong treatment. Completely ridiculous. COVID. But, I, but there weren't any nurses. But, and but the point is, you know, uh, cardiovascular disease went untreated. Cancer treatment went on. Uh, uh, ca cancer diagnosis went, uh, uh, you know, went by the wayside. So we've emerged with the National Health Service broken, contrary to what we said would happen. So we've got two major problems. And with the competence of this government, the chances of fixing it are zero.